I hope everyone's doing well. I'm Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video where I'm addressing a commonly made mistake by students when it comes to integration or area integration involving circular arcs. This here just represents an example. A circle here tangent to the x-axis and y-axis at a particular point at 2 comma 0 and 0 comma 2. Center of that circle is 2 comma 2. You know the formula for this circle would be x minus 2 whole square plus y minus 2 whole square is equal to the radius square for radius here is 2. If someone were to ask you what is the area in this shaded region, what is the area of this shaded region, you know you can do integral calculus. You'll have here a certain a top boundary curve, a certain lower boundary curve, lower limit, upper limit and integrated with dx, you can go from 0 up to 2. You have a top boundary curve right here. You can redraw it out. Here's my 0, 2, 2, 0. Here's my top boundary curve. My lower boundary curve is the x-axis. My top boundary curve is part of the circular arc, which would then continue into the rest of the circle. Anyhow, the frequently made mistake is what will be the equation of this circle? You would think we're doing integral with dx that we should solve for y. You are right, but let's do it. y minus 2 whole square is equal to 4 minus x minus 2 whole square. Then you solve for y. What would you get? You'd have y here is equal to square root of 4 minus x minus 2 whole square. You'll push the 2 on the other side plus 2. And this would be frequently mistaken as being our top of boundary curve because it's part of the unit circle. The only problem is this. When you are looking at an equation of something like this, of this form, r square minus x square plus k, because the center of the circle h comma k, it is implying a convexity upwards or a concavity down. What am I talking about? When you're doing an equation here, y equals of this format, you are implying, I'm not talking about the relation to the x and the y-axis, but I'm talking about a convexity is upwards, but your concavity is down. Here, look at my arc, circular arc has a concavity upward and the convexity is downwards. If you run this through as your top boundary curve, you'll have a mistake because it's representing a possible circular arc, which I mean the rest of the circle, maybe from right here to right here, where you have a convexity upwards, but the concavity is down. Here, clearly, we're looking at a convexity downwards, but a concavity up. So what do you do in this instance? Well, you have to be cognizant. You have to think about what the equation of the rest of the unit circle would be. And you know, in that particular case where you're focusing on this half of the circle, or even partial aspect of the circle where the concavity is upward, but the convexity is down, then your top boundary curve cannot be this. It must be the minus counterpart because it would flip, it would reflect. Then you would be looking at something which would be this form where your concavity is up, but your convexity is downward. So that right there has to come into play. Otherwise your integral will be wrong. What you would do as your integral setup, zero to two, you would have this right here minus which you can transport outside you'd have this square root 4 minus x minus 2 whole square around this you can set up a new integral 0 to 2 and you know this is with respect to dx and then 2 which can come out as a coefficient but we'll keep it in that right here would be your integral the minus will make all the difference otherwise your answer will come out wrong this right here would give you the area of this if you were to compute this properly this area right here should turn out to be 4 minus pi. And you can test it out. You'll get your 4 from right over here. You'll get your minus pi from here. But again, the main point of this was where are your convexities and your concavities. Here, your concavity is upwards. Convexity is downward. You got to put that minus. You got to reflect it. Why? Because imagine this right here was your x-axis. Now you're looking at the lower portion of a circle. You're looking at a circle which would have been reflected across that axis. Anyhow, this right here is giving you a 4 right here we have to get the minus pi from here and you can you could do a substitution you you can do u is equal to x minus 2 and then du is equal to dx you can do new limits u1 and u2 based on this 0 and 2 u1 would be 0 minus 2 which is a minus 2 u2 would be a 2 minus 2 which is a 0 you have a minus minus 2 0 you'll have here 4 minus u squared du you can do trigonometric substitution if a is equal to 2 we can say u is equal to 2 sine theta uh, we can say du is equal to 2 cosine theta d theta. We can do new limits, theta 1, theta 2, everything with regards to this. You put minus 2 here, inverse sine or arc sine of minus 1 would be a minus pi over 2. Then you put 0 here, inverse sine of 0 would be a 0, it would become minus, we have minus pi over 2, 0. I would have here 4 minus 4 sine 
square theta and then 2 cosine theta d theta. That's what I have. Let's erase all of this. We'll work on it. You already know what the answer is 4 minus pi, the integral. Anyhow, when you integrate this from here, you're getting a 2 cosine theta by means of trigonometric identities. Bring the 2's together, you'll have a minus 4. You'll have a minus pi over 2 is 0 cosine squared theta d theta. You can do a power reducing identity. This right here is equal to 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2 d theta. This over 2 can divide with this and make this a minus 2. When you separate everything across the separate integrals over this positive sign, look what happens. I have 1 plus cosine 2 theta will become here d theta plus and then this minus 2 right over here you'll have a cosine 2 theta d theta minus pi over 2 0. You've seen this so many times when you do the trigonometric substitution, u substitution, bring in the sine antiderivative, this will become a minus pi and a 0. All of this will zero out. It will zero out and you can easily figure that out. The only thing which will remain is this. You'll have a minus 2. The antiderivative here would be a theta. You have a 0 and a minus pi over 2. You have a minus 2 times 0 minus minus pi over 2. What do you have? You'll have a minus 2 times a positive pi over 2. You'll have a here a minus pi. And you know from the original part of the integral we already had that plus 4. You saw that that was coming from the equation. You know y was equal to square root 4 minus x minus 2 whole square plus 2. It was coming from this right here. This. When you created this into a separate integral, 2 integral dx from 0 up to 2, 0 to 2, you had a 2 with an antiderivative x, 2 and a 0, which gave you a 4. That's your plus 4 with this plus. That plus 4 and this minus pi which gives you a 4 minus pi. And this right here represents the area of this. And you can test it very easily geometrically. It is indeed right. And why would it be right? Because if you use geometry over here, just for this specific part, you're looking at a square with a 90 degrees, you know the radius over here is 2, that's the side of the square. The area of the square here is a 4. The area of this sector which has developed, half times r square, 4 times theta pi over 2, which here is equal to a pi. If you do the difference of these, you'll have the area of the shaded region, which is a 4 minus pi, and that tests and checks our answer indeed to be true. But this right here is besides the point. My main point over here was when you're doing integrals involving circular arcs, if you have a convexity upward, then your uh, integral should maintain that positive sign. If your convexity is going downwards, is pointing downwards and your concavity is upwards, then you're looking at a reflection of part of that circle and that reflection must be accompanied by this minus over here. That minus will account for that reflection you have. So that's what you have to remember. Here when I'm looking at part, portion of it, something like this, I have a concavity upwards but I have a convexity down, so I'm looking at a reflection of something which would have been like this, and upward, and then I reflected it by means of a minus. And hence, you keep that in mind. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.